Some locally higher amounts, some of that rain very beneficial too, coming up into Georgia by Friday and then into the Carolinas Friday afternoon. Oh, we definitely need that rain in the southeast. Thank you, Chris. Well, we want to bring in Mike Seidel, who is live in Vero Beach, Florida right now. And Mike, this is an area, of course, Florida. We know how to handle hurricanes, but this late in the year, this is certainly very unusual. It is, and the locals are prepared. There's no evacuations here, but in the meantime, we're watching the beach right now, and it is churned up. Now, fortunately, the tide is going out. We have low tide here in about an hour, so it's stay safe to stay here, but here are the key numbers. 8.06 p.m., next high tide. This will all be underwater. And look at this. We couldn't even see uh, these rocks yesterday. It was covered up with the sand, uh, the, the, the dune, and that's it. We got another downpour coming in with a tropical shower. The wind now really gusting. At at the airport, they've gusted to 41. Out here, we've gusted just over 50 miles an hour. So when those squalls come in, the winds really pick up. So more beach erosion. Let me show you the camera from this morning. This is looking out over the Atlantic here in Vero Beach. And the entire beach was underwater. Not surprising because it was at high tide last night, yesterday at 7.30. And it has been decimated since Sunday. We've had this onshore wind. It's basically now north northeast sustained at 25 to 30 miles an hour. Also starting to see some debris in the water. Now we've got a longshore drift, meaning everything is going this way. I don't know if you've been in the ocean in the summer and you go in and all of a sudden you're down the beach. Well, this has been rolling down the beach. Nothing significant, mostly just odds and ends uh, coming down the beach. So we have to be concerned again about another high tide this evening, 8.06. Then the water goes out as Nicole comes in. Right now, very likely, Nicole will make landfall south of here, around Fort Pierce, maybe Stewart, Jensen Beach area. So we're gonna be in the onshore flow. Landfall is expected around midnight, maybe 1 a.m. in that general uh, time period. Low tide is at 2.18 a.m. That's, that's a, a benefit because as the strong push of water comes in, the tide will be going out. So they're gonna kind of cancel each other out. That's gonna save us a little bit. With that said, at the hotel, the water got over the seawall and into the front yard only by being blown over. So I'm very confident the properties here will be fine. The beaches, though, have really taken a licking. So we've got the flood watch up, too, for the heavy rainfall along Florida's east coast. That's more of an inland problem. But by far, the number one issue in Nicole here in Florida, I think, is going to be here at the beaches, whether it's erosion, coastal flooding. We also have some homes in some of these areas, like up around Daytona, that could actually collapse into the water. So Molly will keep you updated. We're here through the afternoon. We'll be on the air tonight live on the Weather Channel from 8 p.m. until 1 a.m. So we'll be in the thick of it tonight, uh, giving you the pictures as Nicole heads towards the coast. Molly. All right, thank you, Mike. We'll stay safe out there. Good afternoon once again. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel. Weather Channel coverage continues. We're going to be on around the clock tonight through tomorrow evening. And <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Need a glass of water. And we've got live coverage too all night. Jim Cantori will be back on later this afternoon. I'll be here tonight from 8 to 1 Eastern. And then Jen Carfagno will pick it up from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. So we've got you covered here on the Weather Channel. Nowhere else to get the uh, best tropical weather coverage. Low tide coming up in about 45 minutes. And the water has come out, gone out somewhat. But we have another high tide a little after 8. Fortunately, the next low tide is at 2.18 a.m. as Nicole makes landfall. It may be around here, maybe just south of here. But fortunately, that's coinciding with the low tide. With that said, the winds are blowing right off the water, east-northeast, about 25 to 30 miles an hour. We have not had tropical storm force winds 39 miles an hour or higher yet on the coast. But we've had gusts in the 40s at the airport and crisp 50 to 55 out here. And on the radar, we've got the little speckled showers rotating in. We'll get hit with a shower for about two minutes, then it stops. The real significant, more solid rainfall will await the evening hours here on the Treasure Coast. Chris? Yeah, and even though gusts have been kind of spotty, we're starting to see an uptick in some of the power outages. Let's bring in meteorologist Mike Seidel. He is live in Vero Beach, Florida. And Mike, you have covered a number of hurricanes for the Weather Channel. Have you ever covered a tropical system in Florida for the Weather Channel in November? 
I have covered a few, but never a landfall one. Remember, was it two years ago we had those Greek names into the month of November, tropical storms? But this uh, could be the first hurricane that makes landfall on the East Coast. The second one, uh, certainly if you count uh, the one on the Panhandle in 1985. But we'll see how it goes. Right now it's a very strong tropical storm. What we're most concerned about here, as we've seen since Sunday, this is day four of this wind and surf. And yesterday we had a dune here. It is gone. We've lost about four feet of sand that extended out here. So a huge chunk of beach is gone. But we do have a nice seawall, and that's going to keep the water out of the businesses. But with that said, the three to five foot surge will continue. These winds are just sustained now about 20, about 30 miles an hour. We're gusting out here 45 to 50 miles an hour when those showers come by. And take a look at the radar. That's what I'm talking about. Not sustained rainfall, not big squalls. But look at the showers rotating in counterclockwise. We just had one. Now it's stopped. Uh, they hit you and they go away very quickly because they're moving very fast with these wind speeds, running uh, 40 miles an hour, rotating in. This evening is when we get the heavier rain. Next high tide is just a little after 8 p.m. Again, more beach will go out. The low tide will correspond roughly with the landfall around midnight or so, give or take an hour. Low tides at 2.18 a.m. That is the promising news overall. But by far, the beaches have just been hammered since Sunday. And these kind of persistent northeast winds on shore always, always chew up the beach. Continuing live coverage around the clock into tomorrow night. And we'll be on for landfall tonight. Stay with us here on the Weather Channel. From Vero Beach, I'm Mike Seidel. Let's bring in meteorologist Mike Seidel. He is live in Vero Beach, Florida, where, Mike, you know, the wind has been present for a couple of days. The, the waves have been doing a number on the shoreline today. What are some of the biggest changes that you've seen there since you've arrived? We've seen a lot of beach loss. We got in here Sunday and started broadcasting Sunday at 5. Here it is Wednesday, so four days of this and it just continues to eat away at the beach. Now, right now, we're in the low tide cycle at 2.06 Eastern. Next high tide's at 8.06. The water will be crashing up against this wall once again, and we will lose more beach. If you can imagine that, then we lost about four feet of sand, and it dropped right off here. Speaking of the waves, look at the surf out here. Oh, by the way, I talked to this gentleman earlier, and he hasn't had much luck uh, scanning the beach looking for uh, a pot of gold, but he's, he's out here doing it because they say do it when you have a storm like this. There's the wave breaking as far as you can see. I just checked the buoy that's east of Cape Canaveral. And the wave heights out there, get this, 31.2 feet. 31.2 feet. It's like a, what, three-story house? At least a two-story house. So some huge waves being generated offshore, and no doubt this has affected the cruise industry. And there have been changes certainly out of Port Everglades and the Port of Miami. Meanwhile, back on the beach, the tide will come in. High tide around 8. The low tide at 2.18 a.m. fortunately coincides with an approximation of when landfall will be. That's expected to be somewhere between here and down towards Stewart Fort Pierce, the Jensen Beach area and across Hutchinson Island. That's when we get the strongest push of water and the storm surge warning specifically for that time period this evening and until midnight. And that goes uh, from 3 to 5 feet on the Treasure Coast and here on the Space Coast. So, Molly, even at low tide, the water is coming up here almost to the concrete barrier. It just goes to show you how far above average or normal the water is with this system and four days of wind blowing on shore here on the east coast of Florida. Yeah, that'll cause some big problems. And, you know, I can't help but to think of beaches just north of you, Mike, which took a beating from Hurricane Ian. Let's bring in meteorologist Mike Seidel. He is live in Vero Beach, Florida, where, Mike, we're at low tide right now. But what can people expect as we get into the next high tide cycle? Now, certainly the weather will go downhill this evening because we're going to have a lot more rain and stronger winds as Nicole makes an approach and makes landfall. We think landfall is going to be midnight, 1, maybe 2 a.m. Uh, the GFS American model has it coming in around 1 a.m. And the, uh, the European has it coming in maybe a little bit later, basically in the same area, somewhere on the Treasure Coast. And that means we're going to be probably on the north side. The onshore flow will continue. We do have a storm surge warning of three to five feet above the normally drier high ground. So the tide 
is going to be especially high at 8 o'clock, but it's going to be going out as the cold makes landfall, and that's that's a good thing. Forget the hood. Yesterday, I, I mentioned we had a dune here about four feet high. It dropped off. That's gone. Look at the palm trees being whipped by the wind here. Sustained now 30-something miles an hour, 30, 32. Not tropical storm force yet, but we've gusted up the beach at a weather station to 57 miles an hour, and the surf just all cranked up. Mention the wave heights east of Cape Canaveral now, 35 plus feet, 35 foot plus waves, it's about 60 or so miles east of uh, the Cape. As far as power outages right now, about 3,200 customers in the state of Florida. That's going to go up, and I read a couple of days ago that they've got 13,000 Florida Power Light crews in place ready to tackle any power outages that uh, hit here tonight and tomorrow. It will weaken, though, starting as soon as it gets landfall. So let's bring in meteorologist Mike Seidel. He is live in Vero Beach, Florida, where, Mike, you know, a landfalling tropical system in Florida, that is not uncommon. But November, that is extremely unusual. Are people there, are they prepared? They are, and they also know this is not an Ian, and they have made their necessary precautions. We've got some sandbags here at the hotel. Let's bring in the city manager. We talked to him yesterday, uh, Monty Frost. I love that name. It's a great radio name, you know? That's, go ahead. Th thanks, Mike. Happy to be here with you again. Wish the weather would get a little better. Well, Will, after tomorrow morning, let's talk first about these beaches, because we talked about this yesterday and how much sand we've lost since we last talked to you. We've had two more high tides. We have. We've, we've lost a lot of sand today. We've had a couple locations where we had to close the road a couple blocks to the north of us and we had to close a boardwalk in a park a couple blocks to the south of us just because of erosion on the beach. How unusual is that? Well, it's not unusual that we get erosion. It's, it's pretty unusual we get it this badly. When we have a hurricane or something worse, we, uh, we, we typically do lose sand in both those locations. 2004, we lost the entire road up about two blocks to the north of us. Now, let me... Um Jog my memory. Was that Francis or Gene? Yes, both. Oh, they were about Francis was Labor Day weekend. I was at Palm Beach, and then Gene was. Gene was about was, six weeks later. Yeah, so four in a row. I think one spot in South Central Florida had three hurricanes go right over them. Now, what about uh, the evacuation situation? Well, our county has issued a, a voluntary evacuation for any property east of US-1, Highway US-1, that would be low-lying and subject to flooding or in a compromised structure or something that may be affected by beach erosion. And the big question now is, does the bridge shut down for a few hours late tonight and tomorrow morning? The sustained winds have to be 45 miles an hour. We're nowhere close, but we still have to get the center, the core of Nicole in here, and that's going to be around midnight or so. Yeah, our law enforcement will be monitoring the bridges, and they will make sure that if the winds get to that 45 sustained, that they don't let cars go back and forth across unless it's an emergency vehicle situation. We just don't want people up there 60 feet above the, the waterway where the winds are going to be higher than that, right. getting buffeted around. Especially a high-profile vehicle. For sure. And as you mentioned yesterday, emergency vehicles will get a uh, escort over here if there's a need. They will. Our, our officers will be out until it's not safe for any one to be out, but they'll monitor those bridges, and if they need to be closed, we'll close them down. Okay, Monty Falls, thanks for joining us once again, and we may see you later if you I want to venture out. You know where to get a hold of me, and uh, I'll be I'll be warm and safe wherever you call me. Thanks, thanks for rubbing it in. At least, at least it's in the upper 70s today. Because I've, you know, speaking of November, I've covered some uh, Nora Ida I was on the Gulf Coast, and I went up to Virginia Beach. It's mid-November, and it was like 52 degrees. So. This is pretty balmy for the storms we've covered on the Weather Channel in November. Yeah, you know, you, typically after one of these storms, it's just oppressive trying to do recovery. So we hope to not have too much to do, but we'll be ready. Yeah, and the weather will be great after this goes by. It'll be it, it will be, yes. Okay, thanks, Monty. And once again, we've got coverage from here right on through tonight and through tomorrow. So we're around the clock in the studio and in the field. Jim will be back on later on this afternoon. Jen Carfagno will man uh, the beaches up at Coke. Beach up the coast from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. Eastern. So, Molly, we've got it all covered, nowhere else to turn. We've got it all for you live and all the updates from the studio right on through tomorrow evening. Back to you, Molly. Yeah, we've got you covered here in the studio as well. Thank you, Mike. But first, let's bring in meteorologist Mike Seidel. He is live in Vero Beach, Florida, where, Mike, you know, we are at low tide uh, right now. Now we're starting to move back into high tide. What changes do you expect to see in the coming hours? Yeah, it's really hard to hear you. Here comes the water back up, and again, we still have about...
four and a half hours before high tide. So again, this is going to be crashing against the seawall. We're going to lose more sand, if you can imagine that. We've lost four feet here, right up here where the dune line was. And tonight, when we come back at 8 Eastern, we're going to be up out of the, obviously, out of this area in a safe place as we continue uh, to monitor Nicole as it comes towards the coast. It makes landfall probably between about midnight and uh, 2 a.m. You can see the surf out here just briefly uh, backing off a little bit, but we've lost a lot of sand and we're going to lose more sand and power too. Right now we've got about 7,000 customers without power. Florida Power and Light has about 13,000 employees crews ready to tackle the power outages as we uh, see how they pan out. It's all about the wind gust and right now the peak gust we've seen on the coast here, just north of here, was 57 miles an hour. Once you start to hit 60 plus, that's when you start to see power outages and even some minor damage. Generally, what we're going to see are the palm fronds uh, coming down. So that is the uh, latest from Vero Beach. Again, we'll see you back here tonight from 8 to 1 on the Weather Channel. Good afternoon once again. We're on the beach in Vero Beach, but not for long because the tide's going to come back in. Next tide's high, a little after 8 tonight Eastern, and we're going to lose more sand. We've lost a lot of sand. And the issue is we've had successive high tide cycles with the wind on shore, typically with a hurricane or tropical storm that's moving even at seven, eight, nine miles an hour, you have maybe two high tide cycles. But the issue here is we had pre-Nicole and subtropical storm Nicole, but we had a big hot in the north, so it's the gradient wind, uh, kind of the double whammy, and so we've had the wind up. Other thing is what we're watching on the radar now, starting to see the outer rain bands in the center of Nicole. Look at that rain, that heavy rain between the northwest Bahamas, made a landfall over there earlier, first landfall. Uh, there and it'll make another landfall later tonight and that's all rotating in towards us. We've had a few sh uh, showers that come in. It rains hard for maybe 10, literally 10 or 15 seconds and then then the bands, the squalls will come in and we'll be on the air tonight from here starting at 8 p.m. in the thick of it but up higher off the beach. Let's go up the beach. Reynolds Wolf has been manning uh, the location up in Jacksonville Beach and Reynolds, it doesn't matter where you are on the east coast of Florida, you've got some healthy surf and, and some big waves to deal with.